we do not believe that China is a threat to us. That's one. China is a friendly nation. It has not declared us an enemy, as the United States has done. All right. Joining us now for more on the upcoming meeting between the Russian president and the American president is Newsmax White House correspondent Emerald Robinson. Hey, Emerald. Hi, John. Well, clearly at this meeting, all eyes are on how the two leaders interact, particularly attention will be paid to President Biden's demeanor towards the Russian president. However, as you said, he really struggled yesterday during that press conference to answer answer the question about if he still thought Biden, uh, excuse me, Putin is a killer. However, he had a much de more definitive answer to that question when asked the very same question back in March. You know Vladimir Putin, you think he's a killer? Mm-hmm. I do. So much more easily, readily able to say that he thought uh, Putin is a killer during that interview with George Stephanopoulos back in March of 2021. And in fact, uh, President Biden's uh, language towards the Russian president has softened significantly, almost like those Nord Stream 2 pipeline sanctions ahead of this summit. I have met with him. He's bright. He's tough. And uh, I have found that uh, he is a, uh, as they say, when he used to play ball, a worthy adversary. That was also from the NATO summit press conference from yesterday. So Biden being very complimentary of the Russian president, something that President Trump was often criticized for and called soft on Russia policy for any kind of uh, compliments he paid uh, Vladimir Putin. Now, in talking about that, it's interesting. We're getting a look, and we'll talk more about that in the next hour, about how that day is going to be structured with this bilateral meeting. I'll tell you, there's not a lot of press availability. Also, they will be doing solo press conferences, and the, the concern, talking to people behind the scenes, the concern has been that if they do a joint press conference or they have joint press availabilities, that either Biden will be tough on Vladimir Putin and cause him to be much tougher on President Biden, or that uh, he will be soft and then be criticized for being soft. So they're just going to try to avoid it, John. Yeah, and well, two completely different media strategies. Vladimir Putin welcoming in the American media, kind of ducking into the wave, if you will, Joe Biden, sticking with what's worked for him, quite frankly, on the campaign trail and through the presidency so far. Very limited exposure to the media. Emma Robinson will see you at the one o'clock hour as well. Let's also welcome in now Gordon Chang and our good friend Tony Schaefer, retired lieutenant colonel from the U.S. Army. Tony, Gordon, great to see you both here. I, I was struck mostly by Vladimir Putin's soundbite with NBC News. Gordon, this one's first to you. The relationship with China and Russia historically has been complicated, to say the least. But in this situation, Vladimir Putin certainly understands that he's able to le leverage this tension for his own benefit, isn't he? Well, he certainly is. And, and by the way, John, you know, today uh, we have seen um, both large scale military exercises by both the Chinese and the Russians off the coast of East Asia. And that one day before the meeting with uh, President Biden, I, I think is not a coincidence. China and Russia are working very closely together. They've been coordinating their militaries. They've been coordinating their diplomacy. Um, so although, yes, they do have real problems, although they may never form an enduring partnership, that doesn't really matter. Because mm -hmm. in the here and now, we see both of them working together. And Putin is obviously using this to get some leverage off of Biden. And I think that explains Biden's inability to call Putin a killer, something he's done in the past. Yeah. Well, you know, earlier this week, uh, Tony, uh, President Biden kind of likened himself to FDR with Churchill before the World War II. Uh, but what I think we really see here more of is a relationship of Stalin and FDR, although FDR in this situation is Xi Jinping. He seems to have this relationship. The only thing that really unites China and Russia is their willingness or their desire, I should say, to see the United States hamstrung and become a lesser power. Absolutely. And I agree with both you and Gordon on this. Uh, let me be very clear. Uh, the Putin move actually, I think, is much more emblematic of the Nixon playing the China card during the early 70s at, at the beginning of our real push to defeat the Soviet Union. It's kind of, you know, strategic mirroring of that back on us. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyway, you cut it. Uh, Putin is a strong man. And, John, I'll just say it. Look, uh, uh, 
Putin has, according to people I speak to, uh, with, with who has direct knowledge, Putin's murdered people. He's murdered reporters in elevators in Moscow. Uh, with that said, he is the leader of Russia. He is a strong man, and he's going to play the hard game. Uh, and I, I uh, believe that the China piece does indeed strengthen his hand against us, because, as he, as you know, uh, we've uh, the United States has been very antagonistic to yeah. to Putin. It's been very antagonistic, antagonistic to China. So this actually plays into Putin's hands at this point, and Biden's going to go into a very tough situation to negotiate. And Tony, I mean, you know, he's tried to kill people too, including Alexei Navalny, who sits in a prison right no now uh, for the no crime doubt. of, you know, not wanting to return to Russia to be, to, you know, to have uh, attempted murder committed on him again. Um, sure. And you know, we don't think pre this has not come up at all. Uh, during the G7. Uh, we don't expect President Biden to mention this. One of the things that they are talking about, Gordon, is his prisoner swap. Um, Paul Whelan, a former security official, was arrested on charges of espionage. Uh, this is a political prosecution. You also see uh, U.S. Marine Trevor Reed here, who was arrested in Moscow for a 2019 drunken brawl here. You know, this, I guess, would be a, a measure of success. We certainly want to see these Americans come home. But what do you think, Gordon, could be uh, a, a clear takeaway, a victory that is attainable for the Biden administration from this meeting? It's really hard to see that because we've got problems across the board, and I don't think Putin is going to be accommodating on anything. You know, just before this meeting, the Biden administration waived the sanctions on the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. That's something that Russia really wanted. I'm not sure that we got anything in return for that, at least from Russia. You might have gotten something from Germany. I don't know. But the point here is that uh, Biden has made an important unilateral concession. Mm -hmm. So I don't really think that Putin is, is in any mood to give anything back to Biden. I mean, why should he? You know, Biden's already given him the candy store. Yeah, I, I mean, that's a great point that Gordon brings up there, Tony. Normally, you'd, you'd expect this type of prisoner exchange to occur in correlation with the easing of the sanction on Nord Stream 2. But this is part and parcel what we see from the Biden administration, giving away the candy shop. Uh, before the Iran nuclear deal, giving away the, you know, all the goods before the Paris Climate Accords. They, they, they want to be friends with all these adversaries before they actually get anything in return. And they will get nothing in return, as Gordon said. Look, uh, every, time, every time this has been tried in history, if you look back at the 1930s and uh, the Nazi Party and Hitler, if you look at the 90s, uh, where we had North Korea pushing the envelope under the Clinton administration, always getting more, never getting less, and the same under Obama with the Iranians. The history of appeasement is, is, is painfully clear. And the moment you appease, you expect that aggressor to be more bold. And nothing uh, can be uh, anticipated except for Putin to be more aggressive right. in this meeting with Biden. I predict a catastrophic failure. Weakness is in of itself provocative many times here. Let's go back to this Wuhan lab leak. I, I hesitate to even call it a theory anymore because we have things like this video, which comes to us from Australian media Sky News, taken from a Chinese state promotional video released in 2017 to coincide with the opening of the Wuhan Institute of Virology's lab. Uh, Gordon, we look at this video here, we know that guys like Tony Daszak said that this was a conspiracy. Having bats in the Wuhan Institute of Virology was a conspiracy unto itself. But we have video, Chinese state video, to prove otherwise. Yeah, Daszak doesn't have any credibility. He certainly lost it over this bat video, which he said there were absolutely no bats at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, only to have this video show up. But also, you got to remember that Dozik spoke to the New York Times early last year, and he actually said he was promoting this theory of natural mutation in order to protect his colleagues at the Wuhan Institute. So he basically admitted in public that um, his thoughts were really more politically motivated than anything else. You know, Dozik uh, is obviously a villain in all of this. And every, it just seems like every week we learn more that undercuts what he has said in public previously. And the question, you know, is, um, was this a conspiracy to cover up, you know, what was going on there by Peter Daszak? This is the guy who ran the Echo Health Alliance, the group that got the funding from U.S. taxpayers, Tony. Um, you know, it gets to the point now where you wonder 
again, especially after what we heard from G the G7 countries, kind of really right. soft rolling this, being very gentle in their language with China. How long can they keep this up? Everyone knows this came from China. It came from the Wuhan Institute of Virology, and they are the ones responsible for the 600,000 people that have died in this country. So we got to go at this two, two ways, John. First, we have to take Dazik and, and those on our side and hold them accountable. This money was spent in, in a way that actually added to uh, and promulgated the uh, crash of our economy and the death of 600,000 citizens. That's no small thing. Secondly, uh, we have to look at this from the perspective of holding China accountable. I believe, uh, based on other sources, that the Chinese military was involved in this as well. That, hey, you know, they're very smart. They will take our money and use it for their military advantage. And I believe the gain of function, function experiments were directly linked to something that the Chinese military was doing. And so at this point, and I said this, by the way, 14 months ago, and yep. I got banned. You know, imagine that. Yep. <laughs> but every, every, every nation uh, the size of China or, or, or in that class does biological weapons research, either for defensive purposes or offensive purposes. In this case, uh, they were doing both. And I think we were funding it. Uh, that's the sad truth. And, and this is something we must hold the Chinese accountable for their, their bad actions in this case. Yeah, I mean, that's what happens, Tony. You took a bite of this and you got banned for it. Gordon and I have been nibbling around the edges <laughs> for the last year. And, uh, you know, I, I'm kind of amazed we haven't gotten banned. But this stuff... And now we won't because the the evidence continues to come out on a daily basis, and it's really quite astounding. Real quick, Gord, I want to wrap up with you and your take on Tony's last comments. Oh, Tony is absolutely right. Not only do we have to hold the Chinese accountable, we've got to hold people in our country accountable, starting with Dr. Fauci, for funding this. Even if it was not for gain-of-function research, the Chinese used it that way, and there were research papers that were issued, so Fauci had to know that his money was being used in a biological weapons program. He must, he must be held accountable. All right, our thanks to Tony and Gordon. Great to see you both, as always. We'll see what comes of this meeting with uh, President Biden and President Putin. We'll check back in with you guys real soon. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks, John. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.